Hello my friends, welcome to another video on the channel. Today I'm going to talk all about Microsoft Secure Score in the Microsoft Defender portal. This was a request from one of our members to share a little bit of knowledge and love for this very, very handy feature that can help you to get to your absolute best security posture for your organization. Without any further ado, let's go and check it out. You can find SecureScore in the Microsoft Defender portal at security.microsoft.com. You can search for it in the top bar, or you can scroll down the overview page and find it here. Click on the link and it opens up the score. It's broken up into four main tabs, the overview, recommended actions, history, metrics and trends. Before we go into any of those though, take note of the fact that there are new permissions options available for Secure Score, and you can now configure Secure Score data visibility based on data source. You can learn more about the change by clicking on the link, and you can configure in unified role-based access control. First, let's take a look at the overview panel. We'll collapse the sidebar to get more screen space. The overview is broken up into your actual secure score, which in this instance is 47.4%. We can see the points achieved. We can see the breakdown of the points by category, in this case, identity, data, and apps. So blue is points achieved and the gray is opportunity for the score. We can also view this by status as well, by request to address with no license, the change is planned to address, have a license, and completed. So you get some good views in terms of your score breakdown. You can also filter your secure score by your planned score. And as you work through the recommended actions, you can set some of them to planned, and you can show the projected score when planned actions are completed. You can do it based on the current license score as well to show what can be achieved with your current Microsoft license and your achievable score to show what can be achieved with your licenses and current risk acceptance. Current license score is shown here as an example and we see the breakdown there by category again and we can again change that to status if we wish to. On the right hand side, we can see the top recommended actions. If we want to see all, we can click on view all. We can equally do that by clicking on the recommended actions tab at the top. Scrolling down, we can get a comparison of your score in your tenant as compared to organizations of a similar size. So in this case, we can see that we are not too different, although I would say that that is not an acceptable score either way. We can see the history, the date and time, and the activity of your secure score activities. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see available resources and messages from Microsoft. Before we get into recommended actions, which is where the bulk of this video will focus, let's take a look at metrics and trends and history. In metrics and trends, we can see comparison trends for how your organization's secure score compares to others over time. We can see the score changes in terms of the regression trend, which is the time of points that have regressed due to configuration, user, or device changes. We can see the risk acceptance trend, which is a timeline of recommended actions, which you will mark as risk accepted for various reasons, which could be that they don't apply to you for whatever reason, or you are using a third party to mitigate that particular risk. In history, you can get a percentage view of your secure score over time. You can also see a list of the points gained under the activity section here based on recent date. You can see the resulting points that were relevant to the secure score, the category to which they apply, and attributed to as well. Recommended actions is where you will spend the majority of your time in secure score. And you can see the list of these actions based on ranking. Under the recommended action column, you get a description for that particular action. You get the score impact in percentage terms, the points achieved, the status such as to be addressed, planned or otherwise, whether the recommended item, whether the recommended action has been regressed or not. And you can see that there are one or two yeses in here, whether you are licensed for that particular action, what the category of the action relates to, such as apps, identity, etc. 
the product, such as Defender for Office, Microsoft Enter ID, and when this was last synced. You can filter this list of recommendation actions, and you can choose by category, such as apps data or identity, status of alternate mitigation, completed, planned, risk is accepted, a third party resolution, or to address, or regressed in the last 90 days, yes or no, the update type, Microsoft added actions or Microsoft updated action points, whether you are licensed for that particular action or not, and the product of which there is quite a long list. And finally, tags. So if we wanted a filter based on Exchange Online, for example, we could click Apply, and the list is changed accordingly. We can see that for Exchange Online, we have some recommended actions to address, but we have some that are also completed, which is excellent. If we wanted to address some of these actions here, we could go into each, and the flyout panel appears, and we get information on what this recommended action is and what it relates to. The description for this one is ensure external sharing of calendars not available. Users should not be allowed to share the full details of their calendars with external users. Currently, no points out of five have been achieved. So the opportunity is five points here. We can click from the general tab into implementation. It tells you of any particular prerequisites, which there are none, and the next steps it will guide you to go to the Microsoft 365 Exchange Admin Center, go to Organization, Sharing, and under Individual Sharing, make sure all policies are unticked. And you have links to more learning from here as well. You can edit the status and action plan, and you can change here what your status is. You can change it from to address, to planned, risk accepted, resolved through third party, or alternate mitigation. We will set this one to planned, and I will say, planned for the weekend, as an example. And I can save and close that. We can manage tags for a particular recommended action as well. And we can type to find or create tags, which can be assigned to different recommended actions. We can share this particular recommended action by copying the link, send via email, or via Microsoft Teams. and we can manage, and that will take us directly to the portal where you will make that change. If you want to quickly get to the next item in the list of recommended actions, you can use the up and down arrows to do so. If we do so, we can see the instructions for this one also. Implementation tells you exactly what you need to do in order to execute this one. In this case, it involves connecting to the Exchange Online PowerShell and running a command. If you want to take a look at items that have been regressed, we can filter by this by clicking regressed in the last 90 days and click on yes. Click on apply and we can see that we have one item here. Ensure multi-factor authentication is enabled for all users. Now to explain exactly what regression means in this context, if we click into the item and scroll down and go to the history in actual fact, we can see that 0.16 points have been regressed from the secure score because more users are now affected. So you can see this is a very live in motion principle. You have to keep very much on top of your secure score in order to try and maximize the score that you want to achieve. So this is always something that you need to keep a close eye on and ensure that you are staying on top of. Very, very powerful indeed. Very, very easy to go through and a good way to get really, really good advice and recommendations on how to improve your secure score and hence your overall security posture within Microsoft 365. There we go, folks. What a great feature, secure score. I can't advise using that enough. It is absolutely brilliant. It's gonna help you to get to that robust security posture in your organization that we all strive for. Don't get too obsessed with getting to 100%. You're never gonna get there. It's just doing the best that you can, keeping up to date with it, trying not to have any regressions where possible, although you can't really avoid it. Such is the pace of change with Microsoft technologies in this modern world of AI and all sorts of other stuff going on. Wonderful.
Compliance Manager in Purview has another uh, sort of similar feature. We might cover that on a, on a separate video very, very soon. But let me know what you think. Do you use the feature? Have you found it useful? Always interested to hear your thoughts, your comments. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Getting so close now to 10,000 subscribers. I cannot wait. I'm so grateful for all the love and support. Also, check out the join button. You can become a member, get access to all of the members' videos for only 99 pence per month. Members' exclusive videos for that absolutely knockdown down low price. So I hope you'll join our growing community. Anyway, let's wind up the video. Good to see you all. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, travel well, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.